Chapter 5, The Calling of Abraham. As we study the world history, an obvious thread runs through all the centuries, and that is God's love for mankind. Even though human disobedience brought sin into the world, God had a plan for redemption. This is the story of the man God chose to become the father of a blessed nation, the nation from which he would one day bring the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Our story starts in the Middle East, in the land of Sumer, in the city of Ur. Abram, this was his name before God changed it to Abraham, was a descendant of Shem, a son of Noah. His ancestors were amongst those who had migrated to the land between the rivers after the flood. Remember this land is known as the Fertile Crescent because of its ability to grow wonderful crops and because it is shaped like a crescent moon. Although those around Abram were not followers of the one true God, God chose him to be a very special person in history. The Sumerian culture was a busy one. We know from literally thousands of clay tablets written in cuneiform that their way of life was extremely busy and industrious. Abraham might have been a merchant in Sumer. Genesis eleven thirty one through 32 tells us the account of how Abram, his wife Sarah, and Abram's father Terah all left Ur and moved north toward the land of Canaan to live in the city named Haran. It was there that Terah died, and it was also there that Abram received the call to leave Sumer. We know that God spoke to him. Abram listened. Abram would become known as Father Abraham to many people of the world. The name Abram means father, and while Abraham means honored father, God changed his name to Abraham and honored him because of his obedience. God also changed Sarah's name to Sarah. When God came to Abraham and told him to pack up and leave his homeland, Abraham obeyed. God did not tell Abraham where he was going to go. He simply said to leave Sumer and go where God told him. Abraham and Sarah were without children. The Bible says Sarah was barren, which means she was unable to have children. This is a big deal in ancient times. People who did not have children were looked down upon by those around them. It was incorrectly assumed that because you had no children, you must have done something wrong to deserve such a consequence. Many women who could not have children were mocked and scorned by other women. This is what Sarah endured for many years. When God told Abraham to leave Sumer, he also told him he would make Abraham a great nation. God was going to make a nation from which he would bring the savior of all people. How could this be? Abraham was 75 years old at the time, and Sarah was not only barren, but also old. People lived much longer at this time in history, but still, 75-year-old Abraham was not considered a young man. So how was God going to make him into a great nation? Genesis 15, 6 says that Abraham believed the Lord, and he, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham and Sarah took Lot, Abram's nephew, and left the land of Sumer. When they had come to the land of Canaan, God told Abraham that the land he saw around him would be his inheritance. Moses records this part of the story of Abraham for us in Genesis 12 and 13. As we study the lives of Abraham and his family, often called the patriarchs, we want to keep an eye on some of the other civilizations of the time. We spent some time in Egypt and Sumer in the last couple of chapters, and now we will turn our eyes to the east. Located next to the Indian Ocean is a country is the country of India. The people who lived near what is now India were the people of the Indus River Valley civilization. Their civilization was situated in the northwestern part of modern India and the country of Pakistan. Just like other major civilizations, the Indus River the Indus River Valley civilization was situated near a major river the river Indus. Also, like the Sumerians and Egyptians, the people of the Indus River Valley had a highly modernized civilization. Their streets were wide and straight. Their houses were well-built. 
They even had indoor plumbing. This was accomplished by building drains, by building indoor drains that connected with a large outdoor drain running under the street. Archaeologists have discovered many well-preserved ruins of these cities and have been able to give great details about the early Indus River Valley way of life. These people are called ancient Indians, not to be confused with Native American. If you have studied American history, you will remember that Native Americans were called Indians by the European explorers who thought they had found a westerly route to India from Europe. The river Indus, like the Nile in Egypt and the Tigris and Euphrates in Mesopotamia, was a superhighway for the merchants of ancient India. Archaeologists know that the Indus River Valley merchants traveled at least as far as Mesopotamia because some of their pottery and artwork have been discovered in Mesopotamian archaeological dig sites. Metals, which are not indigenous to the Indus River Valley area, have been found in the Indus River Valley. This means that people from the Indus River Valley traveled to other parts of the world or that people from other parts of the world traveled there and traded the metals. The people of the Indus River Valley had lived peacefully for nearly a thousand years when people from the West invaded their land. Historians are not exactly sure from where these invaders came, but we do know that they were a warrior type people who did not know how to read or write. The invading people took over more and more of India And just like what usually happens when a country is taken over by a foreign power, the culture changed little by little. Each of the groups of people, both the invading peoples and the Indians, adopted some of the other's culture. Over time, there came to be four distinct castes of people in India. A caste is a class of people. The people in each caste would have nothing to do with the people in the other castes. Each caste had its own type of job. For example, the top caste consisted of priestly and highly educated people. The next caste was made up of rulers and warriors. Farmers and merchants made up the third caste. The fourth and final caste were workers who did menial jobs and hard labor. What a terrible way to live. Have you ever heard of Buddhism? This religion was started by an Indian prince named Gautama Buddha. He did not like the caste system and protested it by spending his life trying to ease the suffering of those less fortunate than he was. Buddha taught the people to be kind to each other. People thought he was so good that they worshipped him as a god. Therefore, starting a religion that would become one of the world's most powerful and widespread religions. Buddhism. It is important to remember that there is only one true God, and he has instructed us to worship no other God. We need to remember to pray for those who are lost, including a large number of people who are Buddhists. Today, India is extremely crowded with people. The country of India is only one-third the size of the United States of America, yet it has more than three times the number of inhabitants. This is a huge number of people isn't it? It was quite by accident that one of the most exciting and important archaeology, archaeological finds of this time ever happened. In 1933, Lieutenant Knabe, a station commander of a French garrison in a small Syrian town of Abu Kamal, was called upon to report a strange event. A group of local people had been holding a funeral to bury one of their relatives, when out of the ground popped a stone corpse. Cobain, knowing that this must be an extremely old artifact, sent a detailed report to several competent authorities on the matter. Several months later, on January 23, 1934, what became an extremely rewarding archaeological dig commenced on a barren, remote hillside near the Euphrates River. Below the archaeologists was the entire ancient Mesopotamian city of Mari. This city had been an extremely important hub of of commerce and was built near the junction of several busy trade routes. The lifespan of the city was discovered to be from the early years after the flood through Abraham's life, probably a few generations into the Israelite stay in Egypt. 
In this dig, not only did the archaeologists find incredible intact remnants of the beautiful city, but they also unearthed nearly 24,000 documents in cuneiform. As specialists worked to interpret the writing, they discovered a list, a series of familiar names, Plague, Shurg, Nor, Terra, and Haran. We know these names because we read them in Genesis 11, 18 through 26. This find is yet another secular source that affirms the Bible as a reliable source of history.